welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us in the latest lecture of the Good Samaritan University Hospital Education System. Today's topic, as you can see, is women and heart disease. Is there a difference? What all patients and all physicians should know. Let me start by asking you a question. What is the most common cause of death in women? Is it A, breast cancer, B, all the other cancers combined, C, a heart attack, or D, a stroke? Well, there were two large surveys put out in this country over the past years asking the question, what was the greatest health problem facing women today? By far and away, the lion's share of the answers revolved around cancer. Most people felt cancer, and in particular, breast cancer was the number one killer for women, while only seven to eight percent of the people felt that heart disease was actually a, a major problem. In fact, one out of every 29 deaths in women every year in this country is from breast cancer, while one in three deaths are from heart attacks. This is more than all other cancers combined. In fact, as you know, heart disease is the number one killer for everyone, men and women. In this country, nearly 40% of the deaths every year are due to heart disease. This by far and away out eclipse all other causes of death, as you can see from this slide. Now, why is it that people, women and men, do not recognize that heart disease is a major problem for women? In part, this is probably due that women get their heart disease much later in life than men on average. Under the age of 50 to 55, if we look at the incidence of heart attacks, most of them are in men. But by the time women have reached the age of 55, heart disease grows exponentially and parallels that of men. This is largely due to the fact that they've lost the beneficial effects of estrogen, their menopausal, and it's been well documented that estrogen has protective effects on the arteries. Now, women also have a much poorer prognosis than men. Every year, cardiovascular disease accounts for a higher annual death rate in women than in men. Now, why is that? Why do women have a higher death rate than men? Well, first of all, starting with what I began the lecture with, that there's an erroneous belief that heart disease is not really a problem for women. And if very few women actually believe that heart disease is a problem, they're less likely to seek medical attention if they start developing some of the warning signs. Secondly, women tend to have symptoms that are much more variable than men. It's well recognized that chest pain, in fact, is the most common a prodrome or warning sign of impending heart disease, but a large share of the a population present with symptoms that have nothing to do with the chest. Some of these may include dyspnea or shortness of breath with activity that you never had before, or sudden onset nausea and vomiting, unrelated to food that you ate or an infection. You may come in with intermittent indigestion like chest or abdominal discomfort unrelated to food, and especially if it's aggravated by exercise or walking. They may only have just sudden onset severe unexplainable fatigue and nothing else as a warning sign. They may have periodic sudden sweating, again, unexplained by any fever or infection. And finally, yes, they can have pain, but it may not be in the chest. It could be in the arms, the neck, the back, the shoulders, something that would not make them think heart. Thirdly, when women have risk factors, their prognosis is in fact worse than they are in men. If we look at high cholesterol, inactivity, obesity, and diabetes, all of these are warning signs and will lead to increased risk of heart disease and heart attacks for everyone. But in women, it's worse. If we look at diabetes, men who have diabetes have a two to three fold increased chance of getting heart attacks something not too good, but women actually have a three to seven fold increased chance of getting a heart attack. Fourthly, the outcome of coronary artery bypass surgery, while an excellent treatment for coronary artery disease, is not as good in women as it is in men. This is an old slide, but it's still relevant today. 
the bypass surgery does result in good outcomes. But especially in the early period after bypass surgery, women tend to do worse. In part, this is likely due to the delayed di diagnosis and therefore delayed treatment for the reasons we stated earlier. And if you're going to delay seeking medical attention for your coronary artery disease, you're going to present with far more extensive disease, which results in a worse long-term outcome. In addition, women have inherently smaller hearts. And if you have smaller hearts, they have smaller arteries. And it's a well-recognized surgical fact that the smaller the coronary arteries, the more difficult it is for the grafts to stay open over time. And finally, and unfortunately, there still appears to be some degree of physician bias when it comes to the testing and treatment for women with suspected coronary artery disease. If we look at emergency room presentation, women who present with symptoms similar to men that ultimately turn out to be heart disease, if we look at what was done with them, they are less likely to have EKGs ordered and labs ordered. They're less likely to be admitted to the hospital. There's less likely to have a cardiology consult and less likely to be followed up in the office for the appropriate testing. If we look at Medicare data for a test utilization, among all the EKGs and ECHOs and myocardial perfusion imaging studies, which are nuclear stress tests, if we look at all of them ordered in the year, by far and away, most are ordered on men, much less on women. In addition, once a woman has an abnormal test, or they ultimately go for treatment like stenting or bypass surgery, if we look at those who did not follow up with doctors, two-thirds of them are women as opposed to men. So what is our message to women? Only one out of every five to 10 women, in fact, everyone, believe that heart disease is a major problem, while one in three deaths in women every year are due to heart attacks. Nine in 10 women will have at least one or more of the major risk factors for coronary artery disease. And if they do not recognize that, they, that heart disease is a problem, they're less likely to be aggressive with the management of these risk factors. To review, these risk factors include smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, especially LDL cholesterol, a family history of early heart disease in primary relatives such as mother, father, brothers, and sisters. Additional risk factors include obesity, a sedentary lifestyle, or lack of exercise, and finally, menopause for women. Now, those years increase and accelerate the risk of heart disease. So the message here is, and this is for all, but especially women should know, if you're at least the age of 40 and have one or more of the aforementioned risk factors, if you develop sudden onset, nausea and vomiting unrelated to food or an infection, you should immediately seek medical attention. You should also immediately seek medical attention if you're developing new onset shortness of breath with minimal activity, something you never had before, or marked easy fatigability that's new and unexplained by abnormal lab tests. If you have recurrent indigestion, chest or abdominal discomfort unrelated to food, but especially if it's aggravated by exercise, you should definitely be concerned and immediately seek medical attention. And finally, if you develop pain, of course, in the chest, but also in the back or arm or jaw, especially if aggravated by exercise, immediately seek medical attention. Well, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today for the latest in our lecture series, and I hope that this talk has gone a long way in, in reversing the belief that heart disease is a man's disease. And I hope it has also encouraged you to aggressively go after the risk factors that I mentioned, and especially if you develop any of these symptoms I discussed, immediately seek medical attention. Thank you very much for joining us today.